There's a new iRacing patch today. It's not a big one, but it does include the LA Coliseum. I know people have been looking forward to that, but uh, we'll get to that later. So let's jump into it, starting with the iRacing UI. Under Profile, dramatically improved and expanded the format, information, and details that can be found about your license classes, SR, NPR status, and seasonal promotion status. This should now be a one-stop shop for helping you determine everything you might need to know about your license classes, including where you stand in the current season, what will happen to your licenses at the end of the season if nothing changes, if you've already, already received a Fast Track promotion or Reckless Driver demotion. I didn't know that was actually called that. I heard a Fast Track. I like that Reckless Driver demotion. I know some people that have succumbed to that. And what you can do to continue improving your license classes before the end of the season. Up next, fix an issue where favorited cars, tracks, and series were not getting properly reflected when applying filters to view the favorited selections. For official series, resolved an issue in the series season schedule where selecting a car from the car selection dropdown was causing some images from the schedule to appear over the dropdown selections. Uh, for team racing, added an additional tooltip to the team driver registration table that displays to the user that all available team drivers have been added. This is specifically to handle the default team case of a single driver on a default team. Heat racing. Resolved an issue where warm-up time for a heat race could not be set to zero. For create a race, resolved an issue where the default value of the weight penalty within the car settings popover was incorrect. For AI, fix an issue where the go to store button was appearing in AI single race without having any content selected. For the paint shop, an informative message has been added to the model options area for vehicles that do not allow custom paint scheme files. All right, for the simulation under graphics, NVIDIA Reflex support has been enabled. When enabled in the graphics options on the top right, and when the simulator is GPU bound, this option reduces the simulator to render latency by enabling low latency mode in the device driver. When enabled with a boost mode, it also keeps the GPU clock rate higher when the simulator is CPU bound, which can help a little bit too. Enabling NVIDIA Reflex in the graphics options can help reduce this latency, mainly when the simulator is GPU bound. And when CPU bound, there's not much Reflex can do. Uh, reflex is pretty good. Uh, I don't think I have many games that use it, but all the games that have Reflex, I turn it on. Uh, I think mostly, most notably, would be Call of Duty Reflex. Uh, I haven't really tried like side-by-side -side comparisons with reflex on or off, but I turn it on. So if you have a NVIDIA card, I don't think it's supported all, on all of them. I don't know. Is reflex like 900 series and up? That's usually what NVIDIA does. I don't know. You think I would know more about that, but I don't know. But if you can turn on reflex mode, I mean, I'm probably going to turn it on and see if it makes a difference. Um, an additional graphics related system meter named T has been added to the user interface. The T-meter measures the total frame time from when the renderer started generating the frame until the GPU completed drawing it. It is not the same as the R plus G timer because the CPU queues frames to the GPU and they can pile up. Also, the GPU is running in parallel with the CPU. The maximum pre-rendered frame widgets are hidden when Reflex is enabled, since it takes over and keeps it near zero. The Re NVIDIA Reflex option is disabled by default if the GPU driver does not support it. All right, for spotters, a new setting, Text duration factor has been added to the app.ini file. This value is the multiple for the length of time spotter messages are displayed on the screen. Oh, that's nice. It's good to have that option. I, you know, I just, I hate to go back to Call of Duty. In like Warzone, we just figured out there's like a new option. I don't know when they put it on in to change how long info stays on your kill feed. I got that stuff uh, for a minute there now. I don't know if I want spotter text on there too long, because if I'm looking and someone is like beside me or whatever, and then I, I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I don't know if I want that on there too long. That's a nice option to have, though. All right. For True Force, True Force support has been tempor wow, temporarily disabled. There we go. While we wait, while we await a patch to G-Hub. This was done because True Force being enabled would cause the sim to fail to close properly. OK, so it won't close right. Uh, all Logitech G923 users will need to recalibrate their steering. I know someone that just got a G923. <laughs> oh, they're going to be pissed. If you if desired, you can man manually turn TrueForce support back on uh, by manually editing the app INI file and setting force feedback. TrueForce enabled force off equals one. 
and reworked Logitech True Force supports, the users will no longer need to recalibrate after the system is enabled or disabled. And that's right, this is hopefully the last time you'll be re forced to recalibrate by an update. <laughs> Alright, moving on to cars. Fixing issue for the Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo 2020. So the new fixed Ferrari, pretty much. Fixing issue where the IMSA numbers were black instead of white. Uh, I feel like that was on the a problem with our Mercedes too, but I don't see that fixed down here. For the Hyundai Elantra, fix an issue with this vehicle having a corrupt YAML telemetry string. Fix the texture issue on the trunk. For the Mercedes AMG GT3, the occurrence frequency of ignition cut backfires has been reduced to a more realistic level. For NASCAR Cup Series, drafting parameters updated. So I'm guess this is going to be... Oh, okay, never mind. I mean, if I kept reading, I would know. So also for the next gen cup cars, drafting parameters updated. Uh, vehicle parameters have been updated slightly to satisfy the latest NASCAR rules packages. Uh, car specs have been updated based on the latest information from NASCAR. This is, includes utilizing low downforce and 670 horsepower configurations at all tracks besides super speedways. Fix an issue with the cyclic modulation and the engine sounds for high RPM. And then setups updated. All right, for the Porsche 911 RSR, fix an issue where the steering column was invisible when this vehicle was viewed in the paint shop. And for the Spec Racer Ford, brake bias adjustments are now allowed during the fix session, fix setup sessions. On to tracks. Charlotte, fix an issue with dark green grass edges. Daytona, fix some issues where some off-track surface types were not set properly. For the road course, the time penalty for cutting the bus stop has been increased. Tire barriers have been deployed in defensive positions at the bus stop to prevent course cutting. I'm surprised they didn't have the tire barriers there. They added that curb, which, as you can see here, the sausage curb has been removed. They had that in, but they didn't have tire tire bundles there. Which, in real life, they don't have the curb, and they do have tire bundles. I don't know. I don't know. I'm glad they took that sausage curb away, though. All right, now for the big thing of this update. The Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. New track. The LA Memorial Coliseum, a short asphalt oval, is now available. More than 100 years ago, one of the United States' most iconic sporting venues was commissioned as a memorial to veterans of World War, World War I. <laughs> Since then, the LA Memorial Coliseum has hosted just about every event imaginable, from the Summer Olympics, three times as of 2028, which will become a record for any facility at that time, to the Super Bowl, and has served as the, as the home stadium for numerous professional and college sports teams in football, baseball, soccer, and rugby. The stadium has even hosted dozens of major off-road motorsport events, with trucks and cars jumping in and out of the Coliseum entrance every lap. In 2022, NASCAR became the latest major league sport to join the venue's legacy with the bush light clash at the Coliseum. A quarter-mile circuit constructed within stadium walls will see the annual preseason all-star race of the NASCAR Cup Series leave Daytona for the first time. The track was designed and tested by iRacing in co cooperation with NASCAR in advance of the unique event, with top real-world and sim racing pros all logging countless laps before both its release on iRacing and real-world debut. The change in menu also leads to a change of format, with qualifying heats to build the feature grid in a manner similar to a local short track race. And right, now's your chance to take the wheel in a unique part of NASCAR history and one of America's most iconic sporting venues. See if you got what it takes to conquer the Coliseum Quarter Mile. I feel like they need a mascot like Dover has for that place. It's going to be a disaster, and I can't wait. For Nurburgring combined, the rolling start grid has been moved back to the gantry on the straight to mitigate issues with proper spacing on starts with multi-class sessions. And then finally, Orin Park Raceway. Fix some issues with terrain planes sticking through some walls. So there you go. Nice little update today. Coliseum. I've already bought it. Also, I'm sorry, there's going to be another video today. It's going to be a very short video on the LA Coliseum. I know yesterday I uploaded three videos because it was a Daytona 24. So I don't know if that counts as like three uploads because it was one race. But um, yeah, I'm doing it again today because I've uploaded the Norktona 300, this video, and then I'm going to have an LA Coliseum video coming up very soon as well. So please don't unsubscribe. I know it's a lot of content very quickly, like all bunched together, but please don't unsubscribe. In fact, if you're not subscribed, Maybe go down there and hit that button and, you know, and the bell and, you know, and give me all of your money to OnlyFans and all that, that YouTube stuff I'm supposed to say. Anyways, I hope this was helpful to you. Please like, favorite, subscribe, all that stuff that I always say anyway. Bye.